uh, with Coach Mike Mack. There he is. Hey guys, how y'all doing? There he is. There I, I'm already, I'm already pumped with enthusiasm. Uh, you know, I've been saying this for uh, the last year or so uh, that uh, I, I watched your introductory press conference. Uh, I've been covering sports down here for over 40 years. I've seen the introduction of a zillion uh, head coaches, different sports, uh, very, you know, uh, illustrious ones and ones that didn't work out so well, both pros and college. And uh, never in my lifetime, you know, having heard the usual kind of coach speak that goes along with the introduction, was I ever as inspired as I was when I saw you introduced as a head coach at FIU. And I, I told Luby, we are doing a radio show at the time, we have to get this man on the show. <laughs> and so it's a pleasure to finally get to speak to you, uh, Mike McIntyre. And uh, thanks so much for joining us here on the program. Well, thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm excited about being on here. And uh, so it's uh, exciting times here for us at FIU. We're right in the middle of recruiting. I'm going to get off of this and head on the road. So uh, it's uh, that time of the year. All right, I mean, how, how would you characterize the first season here? Because um, what we got familiar over the years. Uh, we always tried to, uh, you know, uh, give uh, some attention to FIU, even though the University of Miami was kind of the dominant team in town in terms of uh, sports coverage. But, uh, you know, uh, we uh, were friends with Ron Turner. We got to be friends with him over the years. And, uh, you know, he had a tough time there. And, and then uh, Butch Davis, you thought if it was going to work, you know, Butch might be able to do it. He had a little rise of success. But, uh, you know, what, what are the things that, that you're facing in uh, – taking on this challenge and then how would you characterize what kind of strides you were able to make last year? Yeah. Both those coaches you mentioned were, were excellent coaches. Uh, I'm excited about where we're headed. You know, it's, we just, we're going into our 21st year of football, right? And there's only 50 years of the university. So everything's relatively new. Um, we're excited about where we're headed and uh, the, the enthusiasm, enthusiasm around here from our president, Ken Jessel to our, uh, A.D., um, Scott Carr, we're all in line. Uh, I think that's something that I heard before I got here. There wasn't like a a, a good um, in line there with everybody um, going in the same direction. We definitely are, and we're excited about what's happening here with our, with our program. And we improved some last year from the previous couple years, and we looked to try to make another jump this year. Um, recruiting is going well. I know you always say that, but I can say that with all honesty. There's so many good players down here. We're able to get them. We might not get all the name guys you know about, but there's so many good guys um, down here playing that uh, the athleticism and the, the the it's in their DNA. That's my best way for me to explain it. They love football, and uh, that's really important um, as far as being successful in anything you do. If you love what you're doing and uh, you're you got a little bit of talent, you're gonna have a chance to be successful. Well, you certainly bring that across. I mean, do you have a key in recruiting besides uh, your, your genuine enthusiasm for the game? And, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, your, your interest in uh, the young men that you're recruiting uh, as both, uh, you know, uh, football players and people. I mean, uh, you know, Bobby Bowden had the iron cast stomach and he was able to eat anything. And, you know, when mama brought out like the most atrocious piece of meatloaf he'd ever seen, he would go, I'll have another slice, ma'am. <laughs> uh, is there something to, I mean, how do you recruit today's kids? I mean, uh, does that old school type of stuff still work? Uh, the old school stuff does work. I mean, always being nice to mama is key. No yeah. matter what, how, that's never going to change. I don't think it was the old saying. If your wife's happy, everybody's happy. If mama's happy, sure. everybody's happy. Um, that's still a true statement whatsoever. Uh, every, in every stretch of the word, um, of that. But, uh, one of the, the main things that we're looking for here, we want young men that, um, want to be here, want to stay down in South Florida. Um, you know, there's some kids that want to get away. Um, and, uh, we understand that that's part of the part of it. Um, we want young men that football is important to them. And, uh, and then definitely 100% want young men that want to graduate and want to, um, make their lives better for themselves and for their families. And, um, we're, I'm seeing that all the time here. And then we really, we really try to push the Miami area. Um, and that's that's extremely important for us um, and uh, really like that. Well, Coach, um, it's funny. You talk about recruiting, and we've seen uh, in the last five, three years or so the transfer portal really just change things. Right. How, we've seen it. Look, we've seen it with new coaches and new regimes. It really turned things around in this state. We've seen Mike Norvell really attack the portal and in a way that other schools are, are starting to catch up to him what are your thoughts on the portal and how do you use the portal in your, in your growth of FIU football? Right. Uh, the, the portal is definitely an, an excellent tool um, to help, um, help your football program. There's no doubt about it. I, I think one of the luxuries of our area is there are so many good players down here that they, some of them that leave 
Um, they want to come back to South Florida. Um, you know, it's such a unique area. Um, of course, the weather is so different than anywhere else they go. If they grew up here their whole lives and they go up and, oh, my goodness, it's 60 degrees and they're freezing. And wait a minute, that's a, that's a nice day in, the, in, in, the, in different times for some places they go. So the transfer portal has helped us um, getting young men to come back. I really look for Florida guys, really South Florida young men when they're coming back. And that's how I look at it. I feel like you have a better chance of getting young men that – or be happy when they come back and the families can see them and they can do all those types of things that are important for them. Uh, so that's been a, uh, something that we have used. And then also at the same time where we're sitting, um, we're able to get better high school football players than we than FIU was able to get a few years ago. Now, I wasn't here, but I just know the transfer portal, they're not signing as many high school kids. So there's young men sitting there that would have gone to other Power Five guys um, that we were able to get, and they're excited about being here because they see a lot of their buddies not getting scholarships um, in the high school ranks. So I think on both sides of that, we are going to up our talent um, each year. We, have this, we did last year, we did this year, and we'll be able to keep doing that. And so in a couple years here, I think we'll have a very talent-rich um, team compared to our conference. I told you you could convince you. I mean, we're, we're ready to line up and buy season tickets. Uh, that's absolutely great. Uh, Mike McIntyre, our guest, he's a head coach at uh, FIU uh, and doing a great job. This was a homecoming. It sounds like you have the steps lined up. And this was also a homecoming for you, uh, having uh, grown up in Miami. So uh, yep. how much uh, how much of an influence was that in your decision to come here? At well, it, it was a big influence. You know, my dad played at the University of Miami and then coached there. I was born there. We lived there for a while. Then we moved up to Tampa for a while. Then we moved up to, to Tennessee, to Nashville. Um, and that, But we always vacationed down here. All the places I was at recruiting-wise, I would recruit down here a lot, especially when I was at Ole Miss and Duke and some different places um, in that. And then um, so it, it's always been a, a, a place that I knew all the – the ins and outs of everything in the, in the coaching world. And it's a young man, the guy that's on our staff, Corey Bell, um, who was the youngest um, high school football coach, I believe in Miami Dade history at, when he started, when he was at Edison. Um, I knew him back when I was recruiting back in the early two thousands down here. And uh, so it's just, there's such a hotbed of players and, and connections. And um, our staff has done a phenomenal job of um, we're just trying to absolutely um, encompass every high school in Broward and Dade um, County that we can over and over and over. You've done this before uh, where you uh, had to take a, a team that wasn't performing well. Uh, your uh, first uh, head coaching job at San Jose State. Uh, right. One in 12 the first year. Uh, what kind of fan mail were you getting that first year? <laughs> well, we didn't have many fans. So we didn't get a lot of fan mail. Um, so we we built it up. And uh, when we left, they had a lot of fans. And now they're the program's thriving. Um, and yeah. Brent Brennan's coaching there, who was on my staff. Um, so it, it was San Jose State was very similar to FIU in a lot of ways. It was a, a big metropolitan school and um, a, a lot of talent in the area. Not as much talent as there is here in this area, but there is a lot of talent in the in that area of the, um, there. So it's a. Uh, it's a unique situation. They're very similar um, dynamics. Well, and, and you go one and twelve your first year, and and, and you're thinking, uh, you know, the, the the odds of uh, you know having success might might be insurmountable. But uh, uh, two years later, you're ten and two. Right. So uh, I mean, what can you take from that experience uh, that's applicable here? I mean, it sounds like you you have uh, you know your principles very well uh, you know in order, and, and it's it's, you it's feel very applicable here. Um, there's no doubt about it. Um, very similar. Um, some of the same situations that we walked into at, at San Jose, we walked in here to at FIU. Um, and but uh, I think that the exciting thing here is there um, the football is so important in this area of the country um, that uh, I think that importance puts a little bit more added excitement within our football program and within young men that we're we're getting. Um, so I'm excited about um, seeing that. And we are building it. it. It's a process. I know coaches always say that, but it's yeah. truly a process. And uh, so we're uh, we're building that and doing that. And I um, feel like we're more talented now than we were last year um, at this time. And so um, I'm excited about seeing those those young men keep working and keep improving. Is Dion about to lose a little of his, uh, you know, a Q rating at Colorado? <laughs> Is that an impossible place to win? You, you were there for uh, several years also. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. They're putting all that money into it. You know, we we went there. We went yeah. there. And we were the worst FBS program in America, and 
four years later with ninth in the country and uh, did a lot of great things. You know, I had to raise money to to um, hire coaches and pay them. And I had to raise money to get Vice's helmets there and all this stuff now. And they're they're throwing money everywhere. And I'm really excited for them to be able to do that. And because uh, it's a it's a neat place. There's a lot of great people there. And um, uh, you definitely can be able to uh, win there and them supporting it like they are now. Um, which is awesome to see. Um, they, they, they should. There's no doubt they should be successful the way they're supporting it. No doubt whatsoever. Coach, we've seen, and it used to be you get five years. It takes five years to turn the program around. And then it was four, and now maybe three. Like as a coach, do you feel the pressure? No matter what the program is, it's it can be in Alabama, USC, FIU, US, USF. Jeff Scott didn't. I don't even know if he got three years. Um, do you guys feel the pressure? Do you, how does that change what you do when you come into a program? At San Jose State, I'm sure, hopefully you had a little bit more room to work. We, we've seen it even at FIU. You know, it, it's not like you get that five years to bring in your recruits and bring in your kids. Like, how has it changed now getting into a program as opposed to maybe a decade or two decades ago? Well, I, I think it's definitely uh, changed. And, you know, I think the, the extra scrutiny with um, Twitter and – all the different things out there, there's more opinions out there more often, right? And a lot of the people making the opinions on Twitter that really don't know what they're talking about, correct? <laughs> um, so your, your, your relationships that you have with your AD and your president, if they know every day if you're going in the right way. They know every day, they see what you're doing, they see what you're doing with the kids academically, they see what's going on in the weight room, they understand your recruiting, they understand different things on campus. There's a lot of dynamics that go into a college coach compared to a pro coach, it's not even close. And all the different things you deal with and, and work with. So that relationship is what gives you the ability to they see the program moving in direction. Um, and so hopefully that's, that's, I feel that's definitely what's going on here, but at the same time, you're right. You want to keep making strides on the field and we made strides on the field last year and we want to make more improved strides this year. Correct. And, uh, we have a saying, you're getting better, you're getting worse. Nothing stays the same. So you just keep pushing. Um, I just think there's, there's extra voices out there. Um, it's just the people in power need to un listen to the correct voices. And uh, and if they listen to the correct voices and the correct voices say it's going in the right direction, fine. If the correct voices say it's not going in the right direction, then they make their decisions. And uh, but you as a coach, you just you care about these young men. You work with them. You work with your staff. You set the plan and process. You keep putting the process. You keep elevating their expectations on a daily basis and in every form we do. And then uh, you just love these kids and keep working. I almost wish I had some eligibility left. <laughs> I'd love to play for this guy. It'd be great. Uh, in your coaching uh, uh, career, you also uh, had uh, some time in the pros as an assistant. Uh, and I believe it was like three years with the Dallas Cowboys organization. So uh, question one right. would be, is Jerry ever going to win one in his lifetime? <laughs> well, I was four years with the um, Dallas Cowboys with Bill Parcells, coaching secondary there. Um, really enjoyed my time there. Um, Mr. Jones was phenomenal. Um, if you work for him, it's interesting. I, I, I really enjoyed working for him. Um, coach Parcells was incredible. Uh, Mr. Jones was awesome. Um, we all know if you don't win enough games, they let you go. Coach Parcells did a great job there. We did a really good job. Our last game, um, coach Parcells retired after, uh, Romo dropped the snap against Seattle. Oh, yeah. Um, and so then we, uh, I, I moved on to, uh, the New York jets from there. Um, and, uh, um, so it was, uh, a, a good time. I really enjoyed my five years in the NFL. I could have stayed there in the NFL, but I wanted to coach college kids. I, I love mentoring them. I love working through, uh, different issues that teenagers that are turning into men go through. And, uh, that's something that I enjoy on a daily basis in the pros. You don't do that. Um, it's just straight football. So I always looked at the pros, like I got my PhD in coaching. And I couldn't learn from a better man and football coach than uh, Bill Parcells there. That was phenomenal. And yeah, Atuna had it going on there for a little while with uh, yes, he did. Uh, a hybrid quarterback uh, whose name escapes me. But, uh, yeah, he, he, he didn't seem like the type of guy that was going to be a big winner in the pros. No, he uh, found guys... Romo. Romo was his – he's the one that well, brought Romo. Romo came from Eastern Illinois um, yeah. as a free agent. And yeah. the, 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 the connection there was – is Bill liked him, but Sean Payton – played at Eastern Illinois. 
and really knew a lot about him. And so um, they convinced them to take him as a free agent. And then they, they worked with him hard. Um, uh, a guy named David Lee, who worked with the Dolphins for a while as a quarterback coach, he was the, the quarter, quarter work with quarterbacks there with Sean and really helped work Tony Romo into who he became. Um, worked on his release, worked on and Tony worked at it hard. Um, and so one of my jobs my first couple of years was I helped do the, sh I was coaching secondary, but I would meet coach Parcells had small staffs. So I would meet with Romo some, cause he would have to play the scout type quarterback. He'd have to emulate different quarterbacks and he was great. What a phenomenal athlete. Um, Tony Romo is though. I don't know if everybody knows what type of athlete he is. You know, he started on the basketball team at Eastern Illinois yeah. in, in college and phenomenal golfer and everything. But yeah, that was a fun time. And I learned a tremendous amount of football that I still use to this day um, in developing players and developing quarterbacks and, and how we practice and different things from, um, from coach Parcells. I know you got to run on a recruiting uh, effort, uh, but uh, two quick things. Was Joe Amazano the uh, special teams coach when uh, that uh, Joe was not was there? Oh, okay. No, Joe, Joe was actually coaching the Dallas arena team at that time. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's right. Back when they were going and uh, he was, he was coaching that and I would see Joe and, the coaches with that Dallas Arena team would come over to our facility a lot. And uh, Joe was a uh, phenomenal special teams coach and just a great guy to talk to. Uh, a lot of yeah. charisma, a lot of character. No uh, really, I really liked being around Joe the little bit I was. Yeah, he, he was always getting a lot of uh, airtime on TV because uh, he was such a – you know, I mean, uh, you know, volatile type on the yeah. sidelines there, and he had the hair, and it was fantastic. Uh, he was a real rock star in terms of uh, assistant coaches uh, getting attention. Right. Uh, all right, uh, and on the recruiting trip, I, I, is there a meal that stands out that you had? I mean, we get back to this Bobby Bond <laughs> thing where you just said, uh, you know what, uh, I would recommend maybe you go to Ohio State. Uh, <laughs> that you had to pull like an I, Anthony Bourdain I, on? I, uh, I went to one home, and um, and I hadn't had a lot of, like, Haitian food. Yeah. And uh, the mom yeah. made us all kind of unbelievable Haitian food. And I sat nice. there and ate for an hour. It was incredible. <laughs> oh, and, yeah? oh, uh, she was right. telling me the different names of everything. And so I got home and I was telling my wife. And so we just found a good Haitian restaurant to go to. <laughs> oh, oh, good, good. And so it, it, was, it was it was awesome. I thought you were going to say there were like eyeballs sticking out and, you know, things, <laughs> animal parts that you probably weren't, uh, you know, inclined to uh, want to taste. Uh, I mean, hey, a pleasure. And, and I hope he can do it again. Uh, you know, it's yeah, fantastic it having you on. Well, we've been, uh, you know, it, you, you've been a tougher get than uh, than uh, Pat Riley or, you know, <laughs> some, some of the you know, real uh, sports dignitaries here in town. And, and you're among them now. So uh, we welcome you back uh, to uh, FIU. Uh, uh, glad to have you on the show. And we hope to talk to you throughout the season. Well, uh, upcoming. Thank you. I'd love to be on. Um... I'd love to be anytime I can. I would love to be on with y'all and really appreciate you having us on. And uh, Paul's up. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Mike McIntyre.